see him in Ames, Iowa, one of the toughest venues to play in all of women's college basketball. Today, number 20, Iowa State plays host to the number one team of the country, the Lady Bears of Baylor. Two of the best teams in the country featuring two of the best players, and their coaches love them. Uh, Kalani has one of the prettiest, softest touches uh, facing the basket, but she doesn't have to uh, use it much because she has a partner in Lauren Cox. You know, she's got an amazing skill set, and uh, I don't know that there's a player in the country that I would trade for her. Hello again, everybody. Along with Brenda Van Lang and I'm Ron Thulin. I don't think there's any question. Kalani Brown, Bridget Carlton, two of the best in the country. And Kalani Brown, the reigning Big 12 Player of the Year, leading this year the conference in field goal percentage. Dominating inside. She runs the floor so well. Plays great with Lauren Cox inside. She's in the top 10 in the conference in scoring and rebounding. And Bridget Carlton is having an outstanding senior season. Leading the Big 12 in scoring and steals. And incredibly versatile. She's in the top 10 in rebounds, assists, free throw percentage, block shots. She can play every position on the floor. Well, Baylor has already clinched at least a tie for their ninth straight Big 12 regular season title. Today, they look to wrap it up outright. Iowa State, Baylor coming up next on Fox Sports. Ames, Iowa, despite a threat of five to eight inches of snow, outstanding crowd on hand today for number one Baylor and Iowa State. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Baylor. Richards, Cox, Jackson, they've started all 25. Landerman Brown has started 24. Iowa State, Kristen Scott moved into the lineup nine games ago, and it's been a different team. As a starter, she's averaging about 18 points a game. Kim Mulkey in her 19th year, a member of the Hall of Fame, 563 wins. She is one over 85% of her games. And on the other side, looking for his 500th career win. Bill Finley in his 24th year. He's led Iowa State to 17 NCAA tournaments, tied with OU most since 1997. And you take a look at the all-time series lead between these two teams, and we are underway. Jenna Cross, Brian Hall, Cameron Inouye are officials. Scott on Karate Brown. Interesting because in shoot around today, Bill Finley spent a lot of time on the opening tip and said, just don't give him a layup on the first play. Brought the double team, forced Kalani Brown into a turnover. And from the outside, Ashley Jones can't get the three. This, these two matched up in Waco earlier this year, and Iowa State played them extremely well in the first half. They're going to let Dee Dee Richards roam a little bit, so Baylor going to her early, the first couple of possessions targeting her. Well, Iowa State lost that game 84-69, but for Baylor, that tied for the most points they have given up all season. South Carolina was the other, and actually Baylor only led by six at intermission. Try to get Kristen Scott going early. Iowa State didn't quite get her feet set on that three-point attempt. This crowd waiting for the threes to go down. Great crowd on hand, like you said, even though oh, yeah. the weather does not look great outside. And Iowa State cannot find the hoop. 0 for 3 shooting so far for the Cyclones in the game. Once again, Bill Fenley saying that this is like the wishbone offense. They're just going to pound it inside on you. And that was a beautiful stunt by Bridget Carlton. Waited till Cox started to make her move and then came, and it really, uh, it really bothered Cox on her shot inside. How about the key advantages tonight, Brenda? Well, of course, the paint production for Baylor with Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox inside. They want to pound it inside. Like you said, Bill Fenley likens it to the wishbone offense. And the multiple three-point threats for Iowa State is their advantage. They haven't taken advantage here early. And this crowd just waiting for them to. Now, one thing Baylor did in the first meeting between these two teams, they did pound it in the paint. They were plus 20 in points in the paint. And they shot 53% of the game. And they up their lead now to 4-0. That time, Kalani Brown got the ball too deep, was just able to go single coverage that time, took it right in. Now, one of the things Bill Finley was concerned about is the Baylor's ability to have the knockout punch to go on those big runs early. From the outside, that's a two. And Scott, you mentioned trying to get her going. Well, and she's trying to pull Kalani Brown out into the area around the arc, but every short 
shot or every shot short so far for Iowa State from three-point range. Well, this is such a balanced Baylor team. Look at the players that are averaging double figures. They've got height. They've got outstanding height also on the perimeter. Chloe Jackson running the point. The transfer from LSU has done an outstanding job for the Lady Bears this year. See, Bridget Carlton is defending Dee Dee Richards. That's what she did in the first game. And so she's just playing center field and dropping off to double on Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown inside. One of the things that uh, Bridget Carlton can't do is get in foul trouble like she did in that first meeting between these two. Picked up her third early on in the third. Middleton on the drive, draws the contact and the foul. The foul will be on Jackson, her first personal foul. And Iowa State will get it out underneath with Alexa Middleton, the transfer from Tennessee, who's meant so much to this team. She had an outstanding game versus Baylor, 18 points and five assists. You know, and interesting that Bill Finley took Kristen Scott out after missing those couple of three-pointers and allowing Kalani Brown to catch it too deeply. Scott, such a big part of the offense for Baylor or for Iowa State. But of course, they're struggling. They need to score. Who are they going to go to? Bridget Carlton. Bridget Carlton averaging over 21 points a ball game overall. She never has had a winning Big 12 record in an Iowa State uniform. She's going to have one this year. Well, she's done an outstanding job, Carlton, but it's all the talent around her that's made them so much better this year. Well, great double, but Carlton couldn't get over underneath quick enough. Great vision by Cox. She saw the double team coming. Richard slipped to the basket. Good teamwork for Baylor reading the defense. When you talk about Cox's passing. She averages 3.4 assists a game. The two from the outside, Cox will pull it down. That's underrated, I think. Lauren Cox is an outstanding pass. She's one of the top in assists in the Big 12 Conference. Now, a big part of that is because she's passing yeah, exactly. to Kalani Brown a lot, who is leading the conference and one of the top shooters in the nation. That helps Lauren Cox's assist numbers, but those two work together so extremely well. Meredith Burkhall picks up the foul, her first personal foul. At the line, it'll be Kalani Brown. Out of Slidell, Louisiana. Unanimous all first team Big 12 last year, and as Brenda mentioned earlier, player of the year. 79% free throw shooter on the season. She had 18 points, eight rebounds versus Iowa State in game one. You gotta love it when you're big as a career 73% free throw shooter because she gets pounded on a lot. Well, as we heard from Kim Mulkey in our open at the soft touch that Kalani Brown has. Middleton, who spent about an extra 45 minutes yesterday after practice shooting, can't get that shot to go down. All the shots just a little short for Iowa State. They know they have a good team, and they have a chance to play with Baylor here. And you can just see they're a little bit tight to get yep. things started. They don't want to allow Baylor to get out to too big of a lead here, and the fans know it too. This is a good shooting team in Iowa State. They haven't got those long balls to go down yet. Well, Scott's going to come back in. Madison Wise from the corner doesn't get it. She was 0 for 6 versus Baylor, but last game against Oklahoma, she started to light it up a little bit. Now Carlton, they're trying to double on Brown. Burkhoff keeps an arm on her, but they hit the outside shot instead. Nice job by Lander of the corner to curl around that screen out top. And the lead goes to 10. 8-0 run for Baylor. They've hit their last three field goal attempts. Dee Dee Richards defending Carlton. Carlton tries to go baseline. Whistle and a foul is going to be called. That'll go against Baylor. That's a good matchup for Baylor. The size, the length of Dee Dee Richards on Carlton. Carlton's so crafty with the basketball, though. Now, Chloe Jackson, last game versus Baylor. It was a momentous occasion for her, and we will explain when we come back to snowy Ames, Iowa. Baylor has seven wins all time versus AP top five teams. The last time they did it was versus Baylor in 2015. Now they find themselves down by 10. First meeting between these two teams, Chloe Jackson, her third career double-double for Baylor, her first as a Lady Bear. Well, she was able to score from the perimeter and assist. 11 assists in that ball game and terrific defense as well. 
terrific job as she has transitioned into this point guard position. She transferred from LSU. That was not her yep. position at LSU before. Baylor needed her to be the point guard. So learning a new system, playing a new position, she has come into her own and done a terrific job for Baylor this season and had a big game against Iowa State the first time. You know, you, you and I have talked about this before, but her poise as point guard has been very impressive this season, all the games we've had with her. Yeah, her maturity is very important for Baylor's success this year. Now Carlton moves out front. Dee Dee Richards meets her, waits for the pick set by Scott. Carlton, nothing doing. Good job by Richards. Shot clock at 12. Nice hedge that time by Kalani Brown. But Middleton staying with it, keeping her dribble going. Even though Brown was there on the catch for the three-pointer, Middleton kept her dribble, got that mid-range jumper to go. Now, one of the things that Alexa Middleton has worked out is shot selection this year, and she's really improved recently. That's a good sign for Iowa State. Nezequa up off Iowa State's bench. She'll check in. Shot clock at six. Baylor works it down. Shot clock at four. In the paint, the running right-hander won't go. Lord Cox, though, with a putback. Boy, and when you get Baylor to miss their first shot, you have to block yeah. out. They're so good at getting on the offensive boards, but they worked the entire shot clock that time to force a miss and then gave up an easy basket. And Cox, who got her 1,000th career point versus Iowa State. Middleton out front. Scott sets the feet, lets it fly, and buries it. And that's what Iowa State needed. You feel like once that first three-pointer goes in, it's just going to start happening. And Scott missed the first couple, had a defensive error. Bill Finley took her out. She comes back in, hits a three. The last four games, she's averaged nearly 20 points a game. Tough cover for Wise. Cox is on her. And Cox draws the whistle and the foul. Lauren Cox does so many things for Baylor. Yeah, she positions herself to get the offensive rebound quick, back up, and then the three. Kristen Scott, little pick and pop, able to draw Kalani Brown out to the perimeter. That's where the advantage is for Iowa State. Multiple three-point options, even those that Kalani Brown might be defending. So Brown goes out, and Alyssa Smith goes in so that she can defend those three-point shooters out there. And Kim Mulkey talking about you take advantage on your end of the court. Right. Your advantage will help you out down here defensively. Well, Ray Johnson and Inez Nezequa checked in for Iowa State. Bill Finley was not pleased with his defense on that last Baylor possession. Carlton again sees the double immediately. Well, and Lauren Cox this time is defending her. So as they take out Kalani Brown, Baylor, that shifts the defensive assignments. Lauren Cox is now chasing Bridget Carlton on the perimeter where Dee Dee Richards was before. Now they switch back. I got to mention it. Kim Mulkey's got Iowa State colors on. <laughs> yeah, she walked into Hilton Coliseum. That was the first thing you noticed. I think I think Bill talked to her about it. Coach Finley talked to her. She walked in. We caught it right away. Johnson, little roll. As a quad inside, grab the basket. Foul's going to be called on Smith. Terrific job sticking with it by Nezakwa because that was a tough pass in traffic. A nice pick and roll, the roll, and Smith all over her, but somehow Nezakwa able to secure the basketball and be strong with it to score and draw the foul. And the senior from Burundi has become quite a fan favorite. Possibility she may get an extra year of eligibility as she completes the three-point play. Lead is down to five. Baylor led by as many as ten. And Baylor brings Kalani Brown back in. And Carlton tried to cover up as quickly as she could, but Dee Dee Richards still found the opening. She's and got six. Again, so what Iowa State is doing, Carlton is playing Richards. A lot of teams in the Big 12 are doing this. They're leading her to double team. Richards doing a really nice job with the basket cut. Kalani Brown with the rejection. That is her 39th of the season. Two of the top players in the country going head to head right there. That's good hustle by Kalani Brown to get back and block the shot. Carlton tried to get by her, but good footwork by Kalani Brown. Ray Johnson, the sophomore out of Albertville, Minnesota, now running the point. She's got outstanding basketball IQ. Shot clock at five. That's the work on Cox. 
Mezikow with two, lost the hand a little bit. Baylor's basketball. Only the second turnover for Iowa State. Middleton will come back into the lineup. Johnson will go out for the Cyclones. And now Baylor shooting 58% and under Kim Mulkey, they're 214 and one when they shoot over 50%. Foul underneath. And I think that's going to be on Jones. Doesn't run. Check that. Doesn't run. And she was trying to be physical with Kalani Brown as she was going across the lane. Get shoot, score. Chloe Jackson again. Clutch a hop being ready to catch and shoot off the inbounds play. I'll tell you, she is such a complete player going after her masters in divinity down in Waco. Middleton, good defense by the Lady Bears. Watch Richards crowd her on the three-point line. Middleton had such a terrific first half, 24 points in the first half in Waco. Baylor doing everything they can to keep it out of her hands. Good defense that time. Up ahead to Kalani Brown, Middleton on her side, but Brown gets the layup. Look at that. Brown switched out on Carlton, didn't allow her to get the three-point shot, and when the ball got away from Carlton, Brown leaks out for the fast break basket. I mean, think about it. One opponent versus Baylor this year has shot over 39%, and that was Iowa State from the corner, down at the three. And that's a clock. had an opportunity earlier as the shot clock was winding down, and Bill Fenley said, shoot the ball. So she was ready that time. That's only her second three-pointer made this season. Jackson, the catch and shoot over Middleton. Too easy. Very easy. Mid-range jumper is her money shot, and it's so smooth that she comes off the screen. Final 30 seconds of the opening quarter. Baylor back up by double digits. Middleton fakes one way, goes the other. Contested shot, good defense by Baylor. And now they're going to slow it up with Jackson. 18 left in the first quarter. Baylor has hit their last four field goal attempts. Jackson looks at the clock. Hesitation dribble. Nice job covering up by Middleton. Richards, the scoop, no. And that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. Baylor shooting 67% in the opening 10 minutes, but there's still a lot of basketball left after one. Lady Bears lead it by 10. So far inside Hilton Coliseum, no Hilton magic, and that's a term that was coined by Buck Turnbull, a columnist here in the Des Moines Ames area. After the men meet Missouri in 1989, they had the title Hilton magic spells upset. You can see under Bill Fenley what they've done, and that's something special to Bridget Carlton. It's our fans. I think that that's all it is. Is um, we have it's such a great community that people are so passionate about Iowa State and the athletic department at Iowa State, and that's a huge reason why I wanted to come be a part of that because it's so fun to be a part of. Everyone genuinely cares about us as athletes and just the passion to be a Cyclone. You know, the fans here are just waiting to erupt. This is a team that makes a lot of three pointers. They've been cold early. Give credit to the Baylor defense. Absolutely. And when you look at the first box score from the very first game that Bill Finley coached 24 years ago, 310 people in attendance. And Bill Finley likes to say, I know that's the number because I shook the hand of every person here in Hilton Coliseum. And what a program he's built over the years. They're top 20 in the country right now and number in the, in the top three in attendance this year yeah. yet again. And just a, a great place for women's basketball. Baylor fans are terrific, of course, as well, as they always fill the Ferrell yeah. Center and a lot of Baylor fans here in attendance today, too. Inside Kalani Brown with two. Of course, we will be inside the Ferrell Center on Monday night. Great battle against the University of Texas. And those two teams just absolutely love each other. <laughs> Not. Not. <laughs> Baylor has been very active defensively. They are trying to run Iowa State off the line. And anytime Carlton typically gets to the rim, there's no defense. That time she just hesitated 
and got right around Richards, and there was nobody there to help. Now let's see if that gets Bridget Carlton going, but still a big lead for the Lady Bears of Baylor. A minute gone by. Outside Landrum for three. No. Scott positioned herself well. Jones runs down the left side. They get it to her. She lets it fly. Nezakwa offensive rebound has it rejected by Cox and Brown. Jones inside, and the foul's going to be called. But I think what Bill Finley will draw from that, the aggressiveness of both players going to the hole. Being aggressive, even though there are shot blockers and long, tall defenders in the back of this defense, you want to attack. And Carlton starts it with her dribble penetration, kicks out, but it's the pursuit of those extra opportunities there. Jones at the line right now. Only four points the first time she played against Baylor, right. the freshman. Double figures five of the last seven games, though, for Iowa State. The freshman out of Iowa City, Iowa, and her parents have Jonesy's in Iowa City, a restaurant. And she, along with all her sisters, four others, by the way, used to dribble around the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, they're dribbling on basketball courts. I'm sure people at Jonesy's, famous for pork, pork loin, by the way. I could check that out. Awesome. You never know when you're going to be there. That's absolutely right. Jackson backs it out. Landrum for three. Got it. Overload on the backside. They let the post players draw all the attention and then the quick reverse to set up the three pointer to Landrum. Nice scheme to play. The Landrum coming off a 20 point effort in their last game versus Kansas. Carlton again. You like it. Well, it's because Carlton got blocked the first time she went in against Kalani Brown. And what have we seen the last couple of times? Shifting gears, getting past Dee Dee Richards. That time, the opposite side of the rim past Kalani Brown. Landrum blows by the defense, and Wise just lost her. Juicy Landrum, such a good three-point shooter, but she can get to the rim. A very versatile offensive player. Well, her confidence is through the roof. Middleton tries a little acrobatic shot into Landrum's hands. The, ju the junior out of Vegas, Cody Jackson again. Jackson, that's her shot. It's it's on the scouting report. Her mid-range mm -hmm. game is her best, and there she gets it in transition instead of off a screen like she had in her last couple of shots. And Jackson averaging almost 17 points a game the last five, shooting 55 percent. She's got eight already this afternoon. Middleton, pull up jumper, nice follow through for Alexa Middleton. Shows her own mid range jump shooting abilities. These two teams couldn't be more different, could they? Oh, absolutely. You know, the fact that Baylor loads it up inside, they look first for Brown and Cox inside, second to this mid range game, although the mid range game with both Landrum and. Excuse Jackson. me, Chloe Jackson. Excuse me, Chloe Jackson and Landrum. Mid-range game really good right now. But look at Iowa State, how different it looks as they all stand around the perimeter and look for the dribble penetration to kick out to the threes to look for their scoring opportunity. You and I were talking to Bill Finley, talked about old-school game spacing. They jam it in. They try to get that 15-footer. This time, Jackson's shot rebounded by Bridget Carlton. Carlton will play a bunch of different positions, and I want Brent a little bit later on. We get an opportunity to talk about how they move her around in so many different situations. Yeah, she she sets up in so many different locations because she can play every position on the floor, and it helps Iowa State look different offensive looks and strategies as she moves around. Scott tried to hurry. It didn't have to. There was still five on the shot clock, and here comes Jackson. Baylor shooting 71% in this quarter. Carlton almost forced the turnover there from Cox, but good hustle play by Cox to save the possession. Shot clock inside of 10. Cox says, well, give me that shot. I'll keep the ball up high and let it fly. No movement in the Baylor offense at all that time. There it is, Burkhall getting playing time. She was the starter at the beginning of the season, one of the unselfish players on this Iowa State team. She's trying to post up now on Brown. Middleton. Oh, got Kalani Brown up in the air, couldn't finish it. 
right idea. Kept yeah. it away from the shot blocker. I'm just not seeing the movement and the screening in the Iowa State offense that they worked on so much in shoot around today. And they spent a lot of time in their two hour practice as Jackson goes to the hole for her 10th point of the ball game. Bill Fedley has seen enough. Timeout's going to be called. Baylor with their biggest lead of the game by two touchdowns. 36-22 is our score, the number one team in the country, showing why they are number one, and here's a good example. Well, the pick on the ball by Lauren Cox, and then the drive around, but watch this defender right here on Cox. She does not hedge out, and so the screen is effective. Juicy Landrum able to turn the corner. Nobody helps out. That mid-range jumper has been going down for Baylor, and they've been taking advantage of screening opportunities. 20 points in the paint for Baylor and of course they're shooting 64% of the game and you can see fourth in the NCAA in shooting percentage at 51%. Well, so much of that is predicated on the work of Kalani Brown and Laura Cox inside but what makes Baylor such a tough team and the number one team in the country are the contributions from the guards and if they can hit those mid-range and a few three-pointers to complement and keep the defenses honest to not crowd inside so much that's what makes Baylor so tough to defend well it looked like Bridget Carlton's leg gave out underneath her still was able to get the shot up She's grimacing just a little bit she did I mean she kind of did the splits there on the drive whistle and a foul is going to be called as Moon Urson will go to the line when you and I were talking before the game about Moon Urson how valuable she is the sophomore out of Louisiana last five games she has been outstanding dishing the ball off 15 assists no turnovers now she came in that texas game in austin and was outstanding 20 points in that game made a couple of three pointers took advantage of her opportunity in the game a terrific pesky defender as well gets both of the free throws she's only 55 percent and all of a sudden the lead is pushed to 16. Iowa State scoring drought now closing it on three minutes as Baylor's put up to another 6-0 run. Now the long defense for Baylor giving Iowa State some problems. As they look at their opportunities from the perimeter, there's already always somebody right there with a hand up. That's where you got to attack on the dribble. Carlton leans in, can't get it to go. Carlton now three of six shooting here in the first half. Boy, Jackson wanted to get it down low inside to Smith. Now she gets a wide open 16 footer and rattles it. 8 0 run over the last three plus minutes now for the Lady Bears. Great ball movement. Baylor's not forcing it inside no. where Iowa State is crowding the paint. And instead, they're looking for what the defense is giving them and they're hitting the shots. I'd say so. Now they're up to 65% shooting. Carlton trying to use that right hand to get Dee Dee Richards off her. Shot clock at five. Works off the pick. Smith got a piece of it and then breaks out. Smith was thinking maybe Tuck instead easy layup and a timeout by Bill Finley. 42-22, Kim Mulkey's squad is on fire. And then Langan Brown Thulin, the lead is 20 for the Lady Bears of Baylor. Let's talk about Baylor's defense. Well, it has been very suffocating on the perimeter. Everybody jumping out on the three-point shooters, getting a hand up, getting Iowa State off the three-point line, blocking shots. They have made it very difficult for Iowa State to get good looks at the basket. Everybody kind of standing around waiting for Bridget Carlton to do something right now. Kristen Scott needs to be more active in the offensive sets. Well, they give Smith a lot of room, and she takes the shot, doesn't get it, but Baylor still on a 10-0 run, and Iowa State's drought now at four and a half minutes. Kristen Scott's being defended by Lauren Cox. I'd like to see her moving more to move Cox Good around point. defensively. Cox is a terrific defender, but you don't want to try to post her up. You want to move her around on the perimeter. Middleton with eight over Urson got it. Middleton with a half a dozen in the ballgame, much needed for Iowa State. 
Uh, they, they need to continue to attack the paint and find the open shooters. Baylor's not bringing any help right now. They're relying on everybody to play one-on-one -on -one defense and defend their, their player. Here comes Middleton up ahead as a quad. Archer glad the rim is round. <laughs> you love that line. That's a terrific pass ahead to score in transition. Thank you, Mr. Naismith, for getting a peach basket rather than a peach crepe. <laughs> <laughs> I covered Naismith's first games. Rebound Cox and the putback. So it looked like Iowa State was going to go on a little bit of a run, but Lauren Cox with her fifth of the ball game. Lead still 16. We are at 115 to play in the half. Middleton is tripped up. Goes down hard. Hey, Richard Carlton has had a, spent a lot of energy in this first half. There's the last play. Erson gets a piece of her. That'll be Moon Erson's first personal foul. And our first look at Alexa Middleton out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Of course, started her career at University of Tennessee. I mean, you think about it, prior to this season, she really had not played 18 months because after the transfer and a knee injury, got to work out with the team a little bit last year. She was a heady ball player. Needed both of those, and the lead is 14. Still far from over. Brown backs in. Nezaplot gave her a lot of room, but I think Kalani may have pushed her out of the way. Fifty seconds. Ron, if Iowa State just has a couple of good possessions here to end the half and get some momentum, it can change the complexion of the game. They needed that shot right there. And Scott couldn't get it to go down. Baylor's got it. About an 11 second difference between the shot of the game clock. Baylor is led by as many as 20 in the game. Again, Brown, this time Scott on her. Richards looks up. Boy, they gave her way too much room. Ball is tipped. Desaquois kept it alive. Got Middleton on the left. Back to Desaquois. Up, under, blows the bunny shot. Final five seconds. Tough break for Iowa State. Jackson. And that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. Baylor shooting almost 58% of that opening quarter. Iowa State struggling down the stretch, hitting only two of their last 11. Brendan standing by with Bill Finley. Well, Bill, a couple of shots didn't go down early, and it seemed like the offense got stagnant after that. What do you need to do on the offensive end? Uh, we got to play through the contact. I mean, you play Baylor, you're going to get hit. Every time you move, you're going to get hit. And we got to play through it. We had some great looks early. Uh, all of a sudden, we got some kids that don't want to play yet. Uh, the, the moment's been a little bit too big for them, so we're going to have to get smarter, play through it, probably play big guys a little bit more, uh, try and clear side drive them a little more. Defensively, you're crowding around the interior players, but they're able to get Landrum and Jackson with some mid-range shots. Any adjustments there? It's hard. You can't guard them all. Um, we, we're late on a couple rotations and gave them a couple three, a couple jumpers that we didn't rotate right. But you got to keep off the board. Don't commit a silly foul. Hang around as long as you can. Thank you, Brenda. All right, Brenda, the number one team in the country is tough to beat when they have a lead at intermission. They are 23-0. 44-28 is our halftime score. Coming up on halftime, we'll be talking about Bridget Carlton, and she got to go home. 44-28, Kim Mulkey's got to be pleased with what she saw. Here's Brenda with Kim. Well, Kim, you're holding Iowa State, a team that's averaging 82 points a game to just 28 points in the first half, 32% shooting. What do you like best about your defense? That just exactly what you said. They only have two threes, and they came from two post players. Uh, we know that they're very good, and they're going to score quickly, so we're going to have to give the, same, give the same effort that we did in the first half, Brenda. And a terrific job, even though your post players are being crowded, of your guards getting open on the, on the outside. Would you talk about the offensive flow to your team? Well, I thought... I thought that early when they doubled our bigs, we found the open cutter, so they got away from doubling. And then I thought there was a little span there where we're looking to kick it out because they're so used to being doubled and all you had to do was go one-on-one. -on -one. 
Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kim. All right. Kalani Brown and company with a big lead. And Bill Finley, the head coach of Iowa State, sending a message. New starters in, except for Bridget Carlton and Kristen Scott. If we take a look at the numbers, only 32%. Baylor shoots 56. Now Iowa State getting a little scrappy down low. Well, we thought this might happen as we talked to Bill Finley. And that's why I always appreciate the coaches stopping by and talking to us before and after going to the locker room. And Bill Finley said, we've got some players that aren't ready for this game. Right. So we're going to put in those that are ready, are going to be aggressive and attack. It's important to, even when you have contact and, and physical play, that you have to be strong. Well, the last seven opponents Iowa State's faced has shot under 45%, not this afternoon. Shot clock at 10. Middleton, Johnson, she spun, thought Ezequa was there, Kalani Brown was. In the corner, Baylor now can just be patient offensively. Well, they used the screens so well. There's that double team again from Carlton. She retreats to Richards, back and forth. Nice passing by the post players for Baylor. And that ends up with Kalani Brown being fouled, and that'll be a shooting foul. That's what's so impressive about Baylor is the way they share the basketball. One of the tops in the country's in assists per game, number one at this time. And a lot of it is the post-to-post -post passing. And Dee Dee Richards there did a nice job reading. When Bridget Carlton recovered to her off the double team, she made the quick pass down to Kalani Brown. And Meredith Burkhoff quickly comes in. Nezequa played 57 seconds and she will sit down. Here's Kalani Brown. Ten points in the ball game. Brown comes in averaging just a shade under 16 points a game. Pretty clean first half, though. These two teams combined for no turnovers in that second quarter. Wow, that's, that's outstanding, especially the pressure that Baylor's putting on the ball. Now, Baylor forced a lot of tough shots. Right. Just didn't force those turnovers. Brown puts up the hand, but Carlton shoots over. And that's where we talked about the fact Bridget Carlton can play so many different positions. That time she just posted up and went up over her defender. Carlton with 10 in the ball game. Jackson now quickly covered up by Middleton. Carlton, by the way, played all 20 minutes in that first half. They're going to need her to play all 20 probably in the second. Ball screen again, Landrum. Richards, baseline jumper, short-armed it into the hands of Carlton. Better defense that time for Iowa State. That's kind of the Iowa State defense we have seen this year. Carlton can't shoot and makes the three. She just went and posted up on the last play. That time will step back three-pointer. Iowa State was just standing around watching Bridget Carlton for most of the second quarter. But if she can get some things going and the others around her loosen up a little bit, as Kim Mulkey yeah. said to us at halftime, we know this team can score in a hurry. Landrum answers the three with one of her own. That's a big shot. That's a big answer. You feel the momentum building for Iowa State. The crowd started getting, starting to get into it. And then an answer three like that quiets everyone down. And when this crowd gets into it, it's very tough. In the corner, Johnson can't get the three. Kalani Brown the rebound. Landrum just dumps it down. They don't double on Cox that time. Jackson left open. They gave her way too much room again. Well, Ray Johnson went to help on the cutting Richards, and that wasn't her assignment. She needed to stay out on Jackson, who is the bigger threat. Carlton had it under control. Carlton works on Richards, has it slapped away. Fans wanted a foul, no call. Technical foul. Bill Finley runs out of the court. calm him down right now because he knows that you've got to be tough against Baylor. you got to play through some contact and he really felt like Bridget Carlton got fouled on that play. And he wants to draw attention to it. But it has to get it under control so that he doesn't get a second technical here. Alani Brown gets the free throw. We'll look at it again. He's protecting his star. 
Uh, she goes in, and we can't see the front side of right. it, but a lot of body contact there on Richards as she rakes down. It looked like she got the ball pretty cleanly, but she was body bumping Carlton the entire drive to the basket. And that's where Bill Finley erupted. He is passionate about this team. He knows this team has limitations, but one thing he's very proud of is the way they've connected. They've got great chemistry. He's going to stand up for his team. He's going to battle for them, and they've Boy. played hard in Big 12 play this year. And Baylor has made it tough for them to get open looks today. Landrum long three. Brown was in position, but Iowa State comes out with it. And how does the team respond now that their team, their coach has fired up? Oh, that's how they respond. You gotta get a hand on, up on Carlton. She can score from all over the court. Carlton with 16 in the ball game. Now they double. Landrum gets away. Landrum inside, no. Brown's got it. Nice job. Scott may have gotten a hand on it. They're letting them play. Jones can't get it. Got a good look. She is born to score. She's had a tough time today, though. The freshman has missed some opportunities. A little extra giddy up in her step, and she needs to play with some energy. Now the fans are into it. Here was Carlton right after the technical foul. Now we wondered how they would respond. Their coach getting a tee and getting fired up. Carlton already eight points in the third quarter after having eight in all of the first half. And the foul was called here on Burkall. I know the fans aren't happy about it, but when a post player faces up, they become a ball handler. Right. You can't put two hands on them, and that's just... That's just the rules of the game. Jackson, Middleton slow on the closeout, knocks down the two. Chloe Jackson having an outstanding game with 16 points in the ball game. I just, I appreciate so much how Jackson is ready oh, yeah. to shoot when she has the opportunities in that mid-range game. Middleton gets it inside, Carlton battles, has it swatted away, goes down hard, and the foul will be called. Carlton staying with it, even though there's a lot of contact down here. And good first defensive effort from Richards, and then the foul called on the second attempt as Carlton, so strong at 6-1. She's durable. She is strong through the contact. Talked about how she can score from anywhere on the court, whether posting up the mid-range game, the three-point shot. She talked to us today about just enjoying the opportunity for the challenge today of how well Baylor defends. Exactly. Carlton, all nine of Iowa State's points in this quarter as we hit the halfway point. Jackson's pull-up, Middleton pulls it away. Down by 18, and we're going to have a blocking foul. And I think that's going to be on Dee Dee Richards. Four minutes and 57 seconds left to play in the third. The number one team in the country trying to get the Big 12 regular season title outright. From the Fox Ugly Sweater Contest this afternoon, 55-37 is our score. Let's take a look at the way the uh, the first reveal of the top 16. Baylor, of course, the number one seed. Should they be in the Greensboro region? I, I think that's a big part of the discussion. They're actually technically closer to Chicago, so it's interesting to see them continue to be the number one, number one in the Greensboro region, but I'm interested to see the committee's uh, justification on that. But Iowa State right now in the top 16. Texas making their case for that as well. Baylor and Texas will face off on Monday, but Iowa State, what a great venue, what a great atmosphere to host first and second round games. Important for them to close strong so they have the opportunity to host first and second rounds. Right. Hello. In the Big 12 today, by the way, Texas already beat Texas uh, Tech. And Oklahoma State took care of Kansas. Of course, Big 12 tournament coming up shortly in Oklahoma City. Yeah, that's just around the now. corner. Oh, my goodness. Get, get your tickets now. Middleton, tough shot over Urson. Good job by Moon on the defense. Quickly up ahead to Jackson. Why not? 
Once Kalani Brown gets that deep, Nesquah couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, she had two feet in the paint as she caught a very aggressive pivot and score at the rim as she turned. Well, the bench coming into this game for Iowa State has not been good, and Bill Fenley telling us they needed to get 40 minutes out of it. They're getting a little bit today. Now almost a triple team on Carlton, but she'll go back to the free throw line. And speaking of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Women's Basketball Championship, single season session tickets for the tournament now available. That, of course, March 8th through 11th in Oklahoma City. Tickets start as low as $12. And if you're active duty military, veterans, or a teacher, you can get a $5 general admission ticket at the box office. We expect to see you there. Well, it's a great atmosphere. It's a terrific weekend. You can come in on Friday evening to see the early round games, the full day Saturday, the semifinals Sunday night, the championship game Monday. Oh, what a, a fun weekend around Bricktown, downtown oh. Oklahoma City. And it's outstanding basketball, and you might be seeing a team that could win the national title. Urson! Uncontested, and I looked over at Iowa State's bench, and Jody Steyer, the assistant head coach, and everybody just kind of pounded their fists, like, what are we doing? And the foul, and boy, Bridget Carlton is drawing a lot of action. This time it'll be on Landrum. That'll be her second personal. Yeah, since Bill Finley picked up that technical, there's been a foul called on Bridget Carlton, I think the last three possessions in a row. And now Carlton will trigger it in. As the quad goes out for a breather, Burke all out front. Playing her senior year in an Iowa State uniform. Kristen Scott is a player for Iowa State that has done a lot of scoring as of late, but she hasn't been as active today. Burke all over Brown, and Brown picks up her third personal foul. Post up Burkhall. I thought the kick to Kristen Scott may have been available there, but the good work by Burkhall. You just talked about it. Her senior year has worked hard, had that health scare in the offseason with the blood clots, has not had the senior season production wise that she had hoped for, but such a great team player. And an opportunity there to take it at one of the best in the country in Kalani Brown and draws the foul on the block. Meredith Burkall started the first 17 games. Cuts that lead down to 18, and Kalani Brown will sit with three personal fouls. Queen Egbo, number 25, checked into the lineup for the Lady Bears. Last night, she's got the ball. Baseline jumper, doesn't get it. Last night, she had a vicious slam dunk in practice. Yes. I mean, it was a rim rattler. Yeah, she has the ability to get up. It's amazing to see her athletic ability. Wise tried to go back door, but the Lady Bears just shut that door down. Kristen Scott, number 25, only had, or she had 12 points against Baylor the last time, and the seven games since, she's been averaging 20 and a half points per game, and she has three points in yeah. this game. She is being defended by Lauren Cox, and Lauren Cox is doing a terrific job, but Scott not being aggressive enough. Jackson! Offensive foul. Carlton came over quickly out of nowhere. Carlton sliding to the side, determined that she was in legal guarding position, defending Jackson. That's a tough call. Yeah. Jackson being aggressive. Carlton still appeared to be sliding over into deep legal guarding position. Well, Iowa State, no field goals over three minutes and 50 seconds now. Can't do that against the number one team of the country. There's a pick and pop right there. Scott with an opportunity. She looks timid with her she, shot, she though, does. doesn't she? Wise pulls the trigger quickly, doesn't get it. She's got a very quick shot, but she also is struggling today. Well, Wise just can't even get open. When she does, she can't hit it. And that's what the defense of Baylor does to you. Boy, that's, a, that's asking a lot for Madison Wise at 6-1 to try to cover up on Lauren Cox, who's 6-4. And Lauren Cox will go to the line, the junior out of Flower Mound, Texas. 
had that huge block versus Iowa State in the first meeting between these two. I want to remind you to start your day with First Things First. Join Chris Carter, Nick Ryan, and Jenna Wolf for the best sports show on television weekday mornings at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Now Lauren Cox, also an All-American candidate. We talked about Kalani Brown and Bridget Carlton at the top of the show, but what she does for Baylor defensively, how she compliments Kalani Brown offensively, what she does and is being asked to do. Lauren Cox just kind of does whatever she's asked to do. Exactly. I mean, she could be an All-American center in her own right, but she does a great job of passing to Kalani Brown. She steps out and has extended her game, can shoot three-point shots. She can shoot from the elbow, and she is a tremendous defender. There she draws the foul as she tries to draw in, but I'm always impressed with her oh, game and her, her grittiness, her edginess. And we look at it again. Tough cover for Ashley Jones, the freshman out of Iowa City. And Lauren Cox will go to the line. You, know, you look at what she's gone through with the diabetes. and She's got that under control. She's worked at her diet, her game. Outstanding player. And she gets the second, but the scoring drop for Iowa State. They've had a couple of them today. This one, how about that? No field goals in the last five minutes of play. Yeah, they've gotten some free throws when Carlton's been fouled, but that's it. Carlton's pull up. Doesn't get the hometown bounce. As the clock fights for it, Cox comes up with a loose ball. And one thing about Lauren Cox, what she does, she's so aggressive. But as soon as she gets the ball, she's looking up in the air. Who am I going to get it mm -hmm. to? It keeps the ball up high. Ten rebounds now for Lauren Cox. The scoop, no. Carlton's got it. Final 45 seconds here in the third. 20-point lead that matches the biggest for Baylor in this ballgame. Kyle's going to be called on Queen Egbo. That'll be her first personal foul. And at the line, Des Nezikwa. You know, one of the things when you talk to her, she talks about just appreciates the opportunity to play basketball at Iowa State. She was a junior college All-American last year out of Jacksonville College in Texas. Pretty good score in J.C. Averaged mm -hmm. 18 points and over 10 and a half rebounds a game. And she's been active today. Which is kind of her M.O. Now final 30 seconds. About a four-second difference shot in the game clock. Still Iowa State only one for their last 10. Jackson out front will slow things up. Then dives, and then Middleton had to pick her up. Cox takes advantage of it. That's one of the reasons the rim is round. Final three seconds, Carlton. He's going to be bumped and fouled. And that'll be a three-shot foul. Jim Mulkey cannot believe it. Well, Bridget Carlton knew the, the clock was winding down, so she tries to dribble past. Now the foul, yeah, I think Kim Mulkey might have a point yeah, there. The, uh, the foul ball. was on the floor. And then Bridget Carlton went into her shooting motion. And Bridget Carlton with only one tenth of a second left will go to the line. We look at it again. No, that's in the NBA. They probably would have counted that. <laughs> Not here, but they are calling it a three-shot foul. We just confirmed. So Iowa State, despite no field goals, six minutes and 21 seconds. By the way, the officials are at the replay, looking at it. They're checking for the time to make sure there's only one tick on the clock left. Kill Buckley, those teams. We take a look yeah. at the clock up top. Yeah, and that's that's what they could go to look for is how much time is left. Oh, they're going to add some. Well, the whistle was blown with 
about a second to go, but I can't go back and determine when the foul was committed. That was the call on the floor, but they can right. see how much time should be put back on the clock. And Bridget Carlton will go to the line. 19.6 rebounds in the game. And they put two tenths of a second back up on the clock. Carlton has expended a lot of effort yet to go out in this ball game. Has played every minute. Twenty-one now for Carlton. Landrum, by the way, picked up her third personal foul. Carlton makes good on all of them. Landrum lets it fly. Not going to get it. Iowa State played Baylor close in the third, only being outscored by two, but they head to the final stanza trailing 63-45. Bill Fenley's message to the team yesterday in practice today in shoot around you can't back down but the first half they did back down then you finish the third quarter no field goals made the last 620 0 for 8 five of those were from beyond the arc they need to do something quickly to begin the fourth quarter and Baylor has been outstanding as usual on the road in a difficult environment They've played great defensively. They've made it difficult for Iowa State to score, and they've distributed the basketball well. Great balanced scoring for the number one team in the country. I tell you, their defense has been doubly impressive this afternoon. Inside, Cox no. Carlton the rebound once again on Monday on FS1. We'll have Baylor, the Lady Bears, taking on the Texas Longhorns live from the Ferrell Center. That's always fun. Well, Baylor's got a, an interesting lineup here. They, this test to potentially claim the outright title again for the ninth year in a row. But then as they go toward the Big 12 championship in Oklahoma City, as Jones finally gets things going from the perimeter, they've got the test at home against Texas, on the road against West Virginia. Good primer to get ready for the Big 12 championship. That's Jones's first field goal made. Baylor tries to answer the three, doesn't get it. Nezakra rips it away. She already has her most points since January 2nd of this year. Iowa State, by the way, takes more than three times as many threes the Lady Bears of Baylor, but they don't need to take threes. Nezakra inside, trying to draw that fourth on Brown, didn't get it. Well, and you have to give a lot of credit to Baylor for being ready to play in this environment. You, you look cool. across the country and you know teams in the top five, Louisville gets beat by Miami in their conference, Oregon with a couple of losses this past week after they looked unbeatable. And Baylor just continues to meet these challenges night after night in a very tough environment. It gets the team that's been averaging 82 points a game. And Baylor coming, exerting its defense here in Ames. And Middleton's got 10. Baylor starting out the fourth quarter the way they wish they would have started out the first half. Fans are now standing. Cox inside. No. Kick it back out. Jumper won't go into the hands of Scott. Here comes Iowa State. Middleton will direct traffic. Carlton wide open for the three. Nezakwa had good position, couldn't get her hands on it. Brown does. She's got six boards today. Cox faces up, keeps the ball up top. And the foul is going to be called. And that'll be on Jones. That'll be her third. Skip pass. Landrum sees Jones coming out at her. Jones sticks her leg out, commits the foul. 
that's good recognition by Landrum. Oh, off the skip pass, she sees the defense scrambling and knows that she can get around on the baseline and draw the foul or get by her and go to the rim. As the quad goes out for Iowa State, they show the double on Brown. Kicks it into the corner, Landrum. Cox, the last one to touch it, it'll be Iowa State's basketball. Iowa State never seems to panic. 8-0 run by Iowa State. Seven oh, they've outscored Baylor here in the fourth, and the run goes 10-0. And their offense looks better as far as moving and passing and cutting, and they've been able to bring their team defense. That's a good cut by Urson. Yes. As the double teams were coming on the ball and causing problems the last couple of possessions, Urson with a nice basket cut. And Kristen Scott was behind her. I thought she was going to go for the block and backed off instead. Middleton pull up over Urson. Second time today, the rim's been kind to Alessia Middleton. Now she has been solid all game long. The transfer from Tennessee has kept her, her wits about her, has been very poised. Back, strong move inside, misses two, but is fouled on the play. Fans wanted a foul as Bridget Carlton stepped in front of her building line. Lauren Cox just keeping the ball up high. She she's missed a few inside that you typically don't see her miss, but stays relentless and goes after the offensive board. And Bill Finley made a great point yesterday in practice and again today. He says if she keeps the ball up, you're dead. You got to make the steal on the catch. Soon as she makes that catch, you got to go for it. Well, it's six four, so long and very rare that she misses a couple of free throws too. And she's 71 percent on the line. You don't, want to, you don't want to coast in here, especially as Iowa State has the ability to score the three and score points in a hurry. And now they've got a little confidence, a little rhythm. Carlton. Well, she's had a couple of open oh, looks. Yeah. She makes you pay usually with those shots. Jackson slows it up. They switch, Scott picks her up. Cox had a little bit of position, but they throw it away. Juicy Light, or D.D. Richards tried to thread the needle. Kalani Brown looks at D.D. Richards and says, calm down, we don't need to force it. It's actually a, a good thought as Cox has the position. Cox thought she got fouled, but just a little too high. Carlton. Now Brown switches on her. No place to go. Shot clock at 10. Plenty of time. Carlton, a couple of dribbles. The scoop and the score. Kalani Brown got out and got a hand up so she couldn't shoot the three. And Carlton goes right by her. Last time this game was in single digits, it was 28-20 back in the second quarter at the 8.06 mark. Carlton wanted to draw the charge, the layup's missed. Baylor's gotten a little casual over this stretch. Middleton, turnaround, way short. And Jackson, that's the kind of player you want to have the ball in her hands when things are kind of a little shaky is a player of the caliber of Chloe Jackson. Front, Landrum wide open, knocks down the three. That is her third of the ball game. She's got 15 this afternoon. Pick and roll, both defenders went with Cox. Cox read it, kicked it out to Landrum. Couldn't have had a more open three-point look. What a big answer after okay. Iowa State had such a roll. Juicy's had a couple of those. Scott still can't get on track. She's just one of seven shooting. Every shot attempt has been from beyond the arc. Well, and it, it was the presence of Lauren Cox. You could see her hesitation. Cox so yeah. good at, at deflecting, disrupting out on the perimeter, and Scott just hasn't been able to get her feet under her to get a good look at a three. Five to shoot. 
Jackson with one. Boy, that was close. It's going to be a shot clock violation. We'll go the other way with it. Bridget Carlton has got this team back in the game. She goes outside. She went inside. 3-0-1 to play. The number one team in the country still on top of Iowa State by a dozen. Back in 2015, there was a little bit of Hilton Magic. The number three team in the country, the Lady Bears, visited Iowa State and lost. And that was a game that the seniors played well for Iowa State. Bill Finley had a smile on his face that day. And Bridget Carlton was a senior in high school and heard that Iowa State had, had, had been able to pull off the upset and was excited about coming to Iowa State to be a part of that. She's done everything she can. Others have not been as tough against this Baylor defense. But a nice run here for Iowa State to get the crowd into it a little bit. Still time for a miracle, but they're going to have to make a bunch of threes here in the next couple of possessions on the, down the court. Yeah, Bridget Carlton's mom told her that, hey, Iowa State won. She goes, what? You're lying. <laughs> mom goes, no, I'm not. Carlton inside gets hit again. Out of bounds, it'll belong to Iowa State. 2.46 to play. Lonnie Brown pleading her case. Boy, Carlton has missed some shots that we haven't seen her miss a whole lot of those. That's going to be an offensive foul down low, and that'll be on Scott. That'll be her third personal foul. She was setting the screen for Carlton on the baseline. Got her arms up. And got the call. Now Baylor goes to work offensively. Here's Jackson has been outstanding today. 16 points in the ball game. That's going to be an offensive foul the other way. And that'll be on Cox. That'll be her second personal foul. Oklahoma, by the way, is leading West Virginia down in Morgantown. Also on Monday, it'll be a renewal of the Bedlam, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. By the way, West Virginia trailing by 15 early on in that fourth quarter. That's wow. a shocker. That is. As, as much as the youngsters for the Sooners have struggled this year, they've shown a lot of potential. Oh, yeah. And they're catching fire right now. Going to Oklahoma City, you never know what exactly. they might be able to do there. Kalani Brown with a rejection, and the foul's going to be... No, she stepped out of bounds. And they're going to go the other way with it. 2.02 left. You have a team like Iowa State that has already made over 200 three-pointers this season. They can turn this game around quickly. Going down low, Cox leaning on Scott, picks up her third. Well, they, they ran the play for a diagonal screen to get Kristen Scott on the baseline, and Cox comes around and a little too physical trying to deny the basketball. Scott got a little more aggressive that time. I mentioned 20 and a half points a game yeah. over the last seven games for Kristen Scott. Carlton doesn't get the bounce, Scott's got it. Gets it back out to Middleton. Scott, nice ball fake. Jones deep in the corner for three. It looked like it just got away from her. It, it did. It was a Joe Nico knuckleball. So Baylor's come up with the stops when they needed to, the last couple of possessions to kind of put the water on the fire that Iowa State yeah. was trying to start. Baylor scoring drought, two and a half minutes. Brown tries to end that. Nice pass inside. Great dish to Dee Dee Richards. Brown has had a quiet 14 points in this game, but she has been great assisting her teammates when she's been double teamed, has made really good decisions with the basketball. I mean, you look at, we talked about Lauren Cox passing. How about Kalani Brown? about one and a half assists a ball game. And she's got three today. And just let the game come to her. Didn't force. Landrum picked her fourth up. Carlton, tough fadeaway. Got it. 
That stops the Iowa State scoring drought of 349, but the clock is against him. Final 50. Finally, Middleton commits the infraction. And it'll still be Baylor's basketball with 43.3 left, fourth team foul on Iowa State. Bill Finley tried to call a timeout. They weren't able to. He was calling a timeout. <laughs> he was waving his hands before the first inbounds pass. Didn't see him. With that, we'll take break. 41.7 to play in the ballgame. Kim Mulkey's squad leads it by 12. 70-58, final 41.7. Iowa State trailed by as many as 21. They cut it to single digits at 65-56. Midway through this fourth quarter. That's as close as they were able to get. Whistle and a foul. And that'll be on Jones. Corey Jackson comes up limping a little bit. That'll be four on her. And at the line will be Juicy Landrum. She had a couple of huge shots in this game. She's got 15 points, six rebounds, four assists. Let's go back to the advantages you talked about at the beginning of the game, Brenda. Well, an advantage for Baylor always is paint production. Even though Iowa State did a terrific job keeping the ball out of the paint, they still were able to score 34 points and multiple three-point options for Iowa right. State, but they just couldn't get the three ball to go down. I thought they missed a couple of opportunities early. They got tight, and then Baylor smelled blood, didn't allow three-point shots after those opening couple of moments and only five three-pointers for a terrific three-point shooting team in Iowa State. And the credit goes to the Baylor defense. Took away that advantage for Iowa State. Absolutely, and it's a time of year you always check the RPI to see how it's going. Baylor right now, number two, Iowa State nine. You can see Texas, TCU, K-State, and West Virginia. Of course, West Virginia again losing right now to Oklahoma. Still, you know, people talk at, uh, it's a little frustrating when you hear say with well, only going to be two, maybe three Big 12 teams. I would respectfully disagree with that. Well, the, the strength of schedule that Iowa has, or Iowa State has, excuse me, number three in the country. Texas has had a terrific year. TCU is, is fun to watch. They've got an inside, outside presence. They've got some good quality wins as well. And still some work to be done there down the stretch. But Iowa State with an opportunity to host, be in the top 16 in the country with their RPI strength to schedule. They had key wins, won the preseason WNIT, and uh, big wins over Miami in the non-conference. Right. done great in the ACC, as well as Drake, who is atop the uh, Missouri Valley right now. By the way, West Virginia continues to trail Oklahoma. Yanusa, 26 points for the Sooners. That's going to be a whistle and a foul. They're trying to get the ball. Brown. Yeah, they're trying to get the ball to Kristen Scott. And Kalani Brown was just holding on, and there was no movement. And the officials noticed the reason there was no movement. <laughs> Brown was holding on to Scott. And the 15-yard penalty has been assessed. And it sure got quiet in here. You could, fans here are just outstanding. Just anybody who's ever had a chance to come here, fans are great. Nobody's left, even though the game was a big margin for Baylor. Carlton's pull up, can't get it to go. Got the own rebound. Cox with a rejection. It looked clean. Good second effort by Carlton as she missed the first attempt but went and got her own rebound. Does Cox get over? She takes a swipe at it for sure. And Carlton at the line. A look at it again. Looked like she may have committed the foul there. Good call by the officials. It's been a hard one to officiate oh, today. Yeah. It's so physical. In the final 30 seconds, four-second different shot of the game clock. Carlton now with 28 points, eight rebounds. But it all started in that opening half when Baylor jumped out to that 21-point advantage. And it all started because of Chloe Jackson. She hit a couple of big shots early. 
And she is going to go to the line, kind of put a little cherry on top. Once again, Baylor is going to win the Big 12 regular season outright. Their ninth straight. But what's so impressive, though, you look at the 36 straight road wins now, 38 straight regular season wins in the Big 12. Kim Mulkey has done another remarkable job coaching this team. And putting the parts and pieces together. Yeah. You know, the, the fact that she dismissed her returning point guard at the beginning of the season. They had to find a point guard. And so many different players have stepped up around Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown to give them this Big 12 title again this year. Middleton won't get the shot off, and that's going to do it. Congratulations to the Lady Bears of Baylor, not only the number one team in the country, but outright the Big 12 regular season champs for the ninth consecutive time. Final in the game, 73-60. We'll take a break. We'll come back from Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa, right after this. Baylor impressive 73-60 win over Iowa State. Chloe Jackson, a big day. She played all 40 minutes in the contest. She's standing by now with Brenda. Well, Chloe, you come in here into a hostile environment and Hilton Coliseum. This is a team in Iowa State that's been averaging 82 points a game this year. You held them to 60. How did your defense do it today? Um, we we focused on that all practice, um, just being able to take the three away from them. We knew they were going to put it up, so if we eliminated the threes that they shot, we knew we would be able to come out with a win. Offensively, when, when a lot of teams in the Big 12 or opponents that you face, including Iowa State, start taking away the options inside with Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox, what kind of opportunities does that open up for you, and what did you see today? Uh, it really opens up that jump shot, that 15-foot jump shot. Um, we, we like to go inside out, so we see that how they're pressuring us, and we just have to be ready to knock it down as shooting guards. Well, you had a career-high 11 assists the last time you played against Iowa State. You must enjoy playing against them. What, what, what uh, advantages do you see in this game that you can take advantage of? Um, definitely being able to shoot that 15, that mid-range mid, mid -range pull up um, because they double in on that post player. So just being able to knock it down and then when they come out to, to me, I know that post player is going to be open. Now this is the ninth straight regular season title for this Baylor team, but this is your first. So what does this mean? You are now the outright Big 12 champions. It's a blessing. I mean, it's an, a surreal feeling. I mean, being able to do it with this group of girls, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. Um, it's a great team and we just keep getting better. You know, and so now you have this one, you still have a couple of important games, your number one team in the country. What's your focus as you finish out regular season play? Just to stay undefeated um, and then keep working on ourselves. So we're ready for the tournament. Well, thanks for stopping by. Nice job, Chloe. So All right, Brenda. Outstanding game for Jackson. 18 points, seven rebounds, three assists. She was the floor leader from the very beginning. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Brenda and I will wrap things up from Ames, Iowa.